we're going to look at applications of the equilibrium constant and we've kind of mentioned some of these that I feel the equilibrium constant is more useful than the rate constant in kinetics I mean we wanted to prove that the constant was constant by looking at different trials of data but you can get more information from the equilibrium constant it lets us tell whether a given set of conditions represents equilibrium whether these pressures or concentrations do they represent a system at equilibrium and if not we can predict where the equilibrium position needs to lie in order to reach equilibrium do we need to shift more forward do we need to shift more reverse in order to achieve equilibrium now it does kind of tell us the tendency of a reaction to occur if a reaction really favors the reactants well then we might say that you know this thing it has a lower tendency to occur in the forward direction this might be like some decompositions that are highly highly endothermic where they really favor the reactants unless you add a boatload of energy then maybe we'll form products however the equilibrium constant really tells you nothing about kinetics it tells you nothing about the speed of a reaction that's kind of what we get by looking at rate laws and orders and all that good stuff and I, some of you always ask a question too it'll always pop up like on an AP test what if you add a catalyst to an equilibrium system the equilibrium will eventually lie in the same place we'll have the same final equilibrium conditions like the same amount of products and reactants at equilibrium but if we use a catalyst we'll just reach equilibrium faster so is it a good thing? I mean, sure it can. You will reach the same equilibrium conditions. You'll just get there faster. OK, so watch what you can do with this equilibrium constant. This is cool. Uh, it makes way more sense to look at these particles in color than in your study guide, where they're just black and white. I don't even know if you can kind of tell, I don't know, it's hard to tell, that they're supposed to represent different elements. So maybe let's just give them an identity, huh? Consider the following reaction. Let's say that, um, I don't know, let's make this something like O3. And what if we say this is like carbon monoxide? And so this would be O2 and this would be like CO2. We'll give them an identity. Then it might just make things a little easier on your study guide because you don't have colors. Okay, so we have been given an equilibrium constant of 16. That equilibrium constant is a measure of products over reactants. We've been given initial amounts of reactants and products in a container. Okay, so let's count these things. Um, what do we have here? Do, 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 do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we've got nine ozones or O3s. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 carbon monoxides. Yep, 12. And I think that's it, right? Uh, initially, there are no O2 oxygens. There are zero, and there are zero carbon dioxide. So these are the <gasps> reactants. And these are the products. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, one of the first questions that they might ask us is, hey, with this mixture, can you tell if this is at equilibrium? Is the system at equilibrium? Yes or no? I can tell you right now that this is not a system at equilibrium. This is not at equilibrium. When a system is at equilibrium, we should have the forward and the reverse both occurring simultaneously. So at equilibrium, you can have nothing that's a zero. You can have no zeros at equilibrium.
So for example, in this case, I only have reactants. If this really was equilibrium, which we should maybe make this a double-sided arrow, if we're talking about it being in equilibrium, this thing should be going forward and reverse. At equilibrium, nothing will be zero. So we have to form products. Okay, after the system reaches equilibrium, what will the expression look like? Piece of cake. So let's use these uh, symbols. Let's plug this in as K equals products. We should have some, let's use oxygen to the first. And I, I don't know if it's going to be pressures or moles per liter, so I'll just use the brackets. One of these. Oh, there's actually one of everything. Over, we'll say O3 to the first, and carbon monoxide to the first. So here's what our equilibrium expression will eventually look like. But again, I can tell that with the given amounts, we are not at equilibrium because this thing needs to have some products. Like We have to go forward and make products. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Now uh, let's make a little note of that. Uh, this thing must shift forward. I mean, if we're at equilibrium, we have to have some products. So initially, we need to favor the forward reaction and get some products. Okay, so when it says, how will this system reach equilibrium, let's make note of that again. How will this system reach equilibrium? We have to shift forward. Shift forward. Because there can't be anything at zero when the system is at equilibrium, because then the forward and the reverse are both occurring. Will the system be at equilibrium? Oh, interesting. If five molecules of each reactant are consumed, compare initial and final conditions. All right, so here's what they're telling us. Uh, our initial conditions were uh, 9, O3, 12 carbon monoxide, and no products, and no carbon dioxide. Excellent. And now we're just looking at this example on a small scale. I mean, on a large scale, this might be like, I don't know, 9 moles per liter or something like that. We'll just look at this small scale and say, what if the system were to reach equilibrium by reacting nine molecules of each? Okay, so here's what this would look like. If nine molecules of each reactant are consumed, this is going to go down by nine. So our final conditions then, we would say this would be four. O threes. This is going to also go down by five. And this would be seven carbon monoxides. Now, because this was all a one-to-one -one ratio in the original balance equation, if the original reactants go down by five, the products are going to go up by five. So this would be five. And this would also go up by five. So we'd have five carbon dioxides. Everything's going to change by the ratio in the balanced equation. So they're going to have to give you balanced equations. This is a nice example because it's all one to ones. I love it. Everything's going to change by five. The reactants will go down by five. The products will go up by five. Would this represent a set of equilibrium conditions? So let's check this out. If I set up K, as products over reactants, with my new conditions, my final conditions, my products are five oxygen, and that's all just going to the first. It was one to one ratios. Five carbon dioxides to the first, and then I'd have four ozones and seven carbon monoxides. And again, these would all be to the first, or you can leave the ones out. Okay, so let's plug this in our calculator and see what we get. Uh, this is 
Okay, now watch what they told us previously. It says the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 16. When the system is at equilibrium, the true equilibrium constant is 16. Guess what? This is not equilibrium. This does not equal 16. So would these conditions represent equilibrium? Big, fat, no. We are not at equilibrium yet. So changing by 5 does not put me at equilibrium. Okay, so now let's see what we can do here. We want to figure out, like, okay, well, how much do we have to change in order to get to equilibrium? We want to get to a point where we change, we plug the numbers into this equilibrium expression, and we get 16. Then we know that the final conditions are at equilibrium. The value of the equilibrium constant is confirmed. Okay, so uh, what do we need to do to reach equilibrium? Because that 5, that was not equilibrium. Well, think about this. K equals products over reactants. Products over reactants. Okay, so at equilibrium, at equilibrium, K needs to equal 16. At equilibrium, K equals 16. We just calculated what was it like 0 0.89? That's too small. So how do we make K bigger? Well, if I look at the setup, it's products over reactants. So I want this to increase. This calculated number that we got's too small. In order to make this K value larger, do you see how we need more products? We need to increase the products. If we increase the amount of product, that should increase my calculated K value up until a point when we hit 16. When we hit 16, it's a done deal. We're at equilibrium. So when it says in which direction must the equilibrium shift, we're going to say we have to shift toward the products, which would mean more forward. We need to shift more forward. So in other words, we need to shift by more than five. In the first example, they just said, ah, what if? What if we shifted by five? We consumed five molecules of reactant. We formed five molecules of product. That wasn't enough. We need to shift by more than five. Okay, so now what do we do? Like, do we just guess? Do we just like guess and check? We could. We could just guess numbers, plug them into that expression until we hit 16. Or we can kind of use our noggin. So for example, um, like what if we tried, I don't know, the amount that needs to disappear in form, they're listing here as x. What if we try x equals 6? So it's got to be more than 5. 5 wasn't enough. We've got to change by more. We could try 6. So we could decrease the reactants by 6. We could increase the products by 6. Originally, these were zeros, so we could put like 0 plus, and maybe x is 6. We could try 7. We could try 8. Can we try 9? Can we try changing by 9? No, you can't change by 9. We cannot do 9. Not 9. Because look at this. We only have nine molecules of that, I'm calling it O3. And at equilibrium, nothing can be zero. If this thing is going forward and reverse, you can't have any zeros. Everything's present. So we cannot change by nine. OK, so that makes it a little more manageable. If we wanted, we could do a guess and check kind of a deal. We could try six. We could try seven. We could try eight. But not nine. Nine would be too much. Manageable. That wouldn't be so bad. 
or your other option, you could do some algebra. Uh, so you could do the guess and check, that would be fine. Or are you thinking in your head like, well, what if I just like set this up as solving for the variable x? So I know that k needs to be 16 equals products over reactants. So in this example, let's just call the products x. So we'd have x molecules of CO2. We'd have x molecules of my other product I was calling O2 oxygen. So the products are starting at zero. They have to go up by x, and they're both one-to-one -one ratios. And then let's say that my reactants would go down by x. So this would be 9 minus x. That would be for the O3. And then my other would be 12 minus x for the carbon monoxide. And they're all to the first power. What if I did that? Hmm, this would be funky. Let's do some algebra. Let's see if we can solve this thing for x. Okay. So what if we have, hmm, fun stuff. Okay, so let's simplify this thing. Uh, do we have to foil this? Awesome. How about we have like 108 minus 21x. Ha <laughs> ha, this is awesome. Plus x squared. So here I just like simplify that bottom expression. Let's just foil that thing. Okay, so now let's start to simplify this. Let's multiply everything by 16. Ah! Oh, this is kind of nasty. Okay, so we'd have like 1,728 minus 16 times 21. 336x plus 16x squared. Gosh, this is awesome. Uh, why don't we just say equals x squared right away? Because then it would equal x times x from the numerator. Okay, so now let's see what we can do here. Uh, 1,728 minus 336 x plus 15 x squared uh, equals zero. And so now if you have like a quadratic solver in your calculator, uh, let's see what our options are for x. So if I plug this in, mm -hmm. which if you don't have a quadratic solver in your calculator, don't freak out. Uh, you'll survive. You don't have to have a quadratic solver in your calculator to get a 5 on the AP test. All you need is something that'll like add, subtract, multiply, divide, uh, maybe do a log, all that good stuff. Okay, so I get x. Ha, this is great. X is 14.4 or 8. Okay, well, X can't possibly be 14.4 because I don't even have that much of my reactants. I can't change by more than what I originally have. But I guess then that it's going to have to be the 8, which would have been one of my choices. Like in this case, I could have done a guess and check. I could have tried 8. And if I would have done it algebraically, I would have confirmed 8. We have to change by 8. So that means that the original carbon, or I should say like O3, we originally had 9. X is going to be 8. 8, 8, 8. So here's like a visual of the final equilibrium conditions. We should decrease that by 8, so there should be 1, 1, O3, there we go, uh, 1, O3, there he is, got him. There should be 12 minus 8, 4 carbon, carbon monoxides, 1, 2, 3, 4, yep, and then the products will go up by 8. So there should be eight CO2s, CO2, and eight O2s. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Bingo, there it is. If we plug that into our k expression, we're going to get 16.